you if you had decided that a certain case can be successful, there's a very simple three millimeter rule. It's kind of a, uh, a twist on Miller's classification or Miller's um, studies on the success of root coverage. So if you didn't, if you don't know Miller's classification, go back and study that or watch some of my videos that, they, that talk about it. But what does the three millimeter rule say? It's basically a rule that helps us predict the level of success, how far your graft will be able to cover the root. So this is how it goes. You start measuring from the tip of the papilla in an apical direction, three millimeters, all the way to an area where the papilla is at least three millimeters wide. Uh, that's why we call it the three millimeter rule. And then at this level, you create a line. This is the maximum level of success with soft tissue grafting. You can't reach more than that. So if you're planning a soft tissue graft, again, regardless of the procedure, it may be a connective tissue graft, could be an alloderm and a tunneling technique, could be a pinhole surgical technique, Vista, you name it, you will never be able to cover more than this green line in this example. And now I think you, you can understand that if you're missing the interproximal tissue, if your, your interproximal tissue is deficient, if you have a little black triangle or a big triangle, your criteria for success, your level of success will be much lower because you're starting to count always from the tip of the papilla. So obviously, this is an ideal case. I hope this is all, all clear for everybody. Okay. So if you have a recession lesion on one or two teeth and you may have a receptive root that is ready to receive a graft. You may have a graft that you sutured perfectly. It's immobile. You're the master of suturing and tissue repositioning, but you don't have good blood supply. It's not going to work. So use your three millimeter rule. Count back from the tip of the papilla, three millimeters. Create your line. And sometimes the papilla are in different levels. Create your line and then you'll see that this case, in this case, the chances of root coverage are relatively low. So I hope this is going to be really helpful. And now you can also understand that if you're placing an implant in between two teeth and the teeth have some recession and there's already pre-existing interproximal tissue loss and attachment loss on the proximal side, you will have soft tissue problems around your implant. So when you're planning an implant, don't just look at the implant site and the soft tissue and the bone and CT scan and a good and good implant positioning. You need to look at the adjacent teeth. That's probably the best predictor of tissue aesthetic, aesthetics of the implant case.